Welcome back to the Millionaire Landscaper Podcast. Today, I'm super excited to bring back on a, a an awesome guest here. His name is Matt Smith of the Service Industry Coach and Service Industry Coach Podcast. Uh, welcome, Matt. Thanks for being back on the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you on here today again. Like I said, uh, today we are going to dive into accountability and, and how it plays a role in not only your personal life, but your business life is, as well. Um, and this is something that you work with people on, Matt? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I do a lot of business coaching. Um, and what I've kind of realized, especially like over the last 12 months, uh, as I've been on this journey myself as well, is like... Um, your business can't thrive until your, your personal life is in order and your business can't thrive until you have the discipline in order to do the things that are required every single day, regardless of how you feel. So, um, I've just kind of naturally fallen into this, this passion for accountability. Nice. Nice. I love it. So for those that aren't familiar with yourself, you mind like introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about what you do and the podcast and everything. I've been an entrepreneur for, oh gosh, since like 2012. Um, I'm in my mid thirties now. Uh, I've built multiple seven figure businesses. Um, and, and now what I really focus on with majority of my time is helping people, you know, like your listeners, um, who are specifically in the home service business space. Um, and we basically implement the systems that I have in my existing businesses into theirs to help them grow and scale. Um, and then I also do a lot of one-on-one coaching with business owners who are just wanting to become better and again, grow and scale their companies. That's awesome. And you guys, if you haven't listened to this podcast, go check it out. It's an amazing podcast, amazing episodes. And you do a lot of stuff on social media, which I'm, I'm a little jealous of personally. I wish I would be better on that as, as you are. You, you do an amazing job on that. So thanks, man. Yeah. So you mind just getting us started here talking a little bit about accountability? I know you mentioned just a little bit ago that's something that you're working with yourself on. I know this is something I need help with myself. Um, yeah. I, I feel that everybody needs this in their business. Like it, to me, just looking back at my own business and landscaping side, I needed that. I needed that little push. I need somebody to kind of hold, hold my hand a little bit and make sure I was doing the things I need to do because I feel we get our, you know, get away of our own selves. Is that, is that something you see? No, for sure. And, and, um, you know, I've coached, gosh, hundreds of people by now all across the country. And the core thing that's holding everybody back is just actually doing the work that is required. And it's because of lack of accountability, lack of discipline. And so what I've learned is majority of business owners know what they need to do, at least to a degree, right? Like everyone woke up this morning and they probably know how to go find a new customer, but it's not that fun. (laughs) Um, and so what I've learned is majority of business owners, they don't, I mean, yes, we give them guidance on what to do, but the, what isn't what is missing. It's the actual doing the work. Um, and so we really dive in on, on helping people tackle that first. Um, and so I I guess we can start wherever you want, but this, this kind of backtracks to my journey, even when I was early on in my, my entrepreneurial career of my cleaning business. Um, and long story short, I had a a heart to heart conversation with myself. I looked myself in the mirror and, you know, I I said, Matt, you're really good at talking. You know, you know what to do, but you're not putting in the work, dude. Yeah, I mean, and this was 10, 11 years ago. Um, And from that day forward, I've I've really been like passionate about figuring out what it is that will allow me to be as disciplined as humanly possible in my personal life and my business so I can move the needle in both of those areas. That's smart. And it, it is very difficult sometimes. Like you, you'll get, find yourself, uh, you know, you're just tired or you just don't, yeah. you don't have the energy today. How have you found a way to kind of work past that or push through it? Or is it just, you just got to do it. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, I think all of us, you know, if, if anyone's listening to this podcast, they probably deep down feel like they were destined for something great or, or rare. Right. Um, like you don't go start a business because you want to be average. And, and so I think all of us to some degree feel like, um, we have greatness inside of us that we haven't, we haven't found yet. Uh, and so for me, I've always felt like that, like since I was a young kid and, um, anytime I get into a slump or I have a debate with myself mentally, like, Hey, I know I need to do this, but I don't want to, I then just simply ask myself, what type of person am I? And for me, 
having to actually admit to myself that, man, I'm just being lazy today, right? That enough. That is enough for me to actually get up and go put in the work because I I will not allow myself to be labeled as a lazy person because I know deep down that's not what my potential is, right? And so I think the first thing we have to do is is understand that we have a God given potential that none of us have hit, um, and in order to hit it, we're going to have to live a a life that is rare, and that is hard. Um, And so I remind myself, like when things get hard or I'm tired, uh, Alex Hermosi has a quote and he says, this is what hard feels like. And, and it, it's in a way it gets exciting because you know, when you're feeling like that, like as an entrepreneur, you're like, man, this is hard. I don't want to do it. I'm tired. Like maybe I could just do it tomorrow, but then you decide to do it. It's a good feeling because you know that almost everybody else is going to quit. And so by putting in the work, and, and, and taking that step of discipline, it gets you that much further ahead of your competitors. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And the one thing I, I'm seeing just even in the coaching side of stuff that I do, it, there's a difference between, and, and there's nothing yeah. sexist about this, but it, between men and women though, I, I feel men are more pushed by like what you said, I'm not a lazy person. I'm going to push myself through it. Like I, I, I re, um, read the book from David Goggins, you know, where he just mentally mm-hmm. pushes himself through, but I'm feeling women don't have that. They do things different. And then to me, it's like, they have to build up these habits to kind of get through this. And I know habits is part of men too, but sure. Is that something you see as well? Um, yes. Uh, I'll say another big key factor in, in men or women being successful and disciplined is who they surround themselves with. True. Right. So, uh, if you're surrounding yourself and this is just an example, but if you surround yourself with a bunch of guys, let's say five or 10 guys that don't care about their health and they're 50 pounds or hundred pounds overweight, I promise that you will be unhealthy. Mm-hmm. You will, you will, it's very unlikely that you will be jacked, super healthy, going to the gym every day. Why? Because your, your circle of influence is not pushing you to be that regardless of how strong or good we think we are. We are very influenced by the people that we surround ourselves with. So the first thing that people can do is either kill their circle of influence. If it's, if it's not serving them or they can really focus on bringing new people in. And so I think it's completely normal and healthy to, to be leveling up your circle of influence on, on a regular basis. Like if you aren't, if you aren't adding new people who are better than you to your circle, I think you're staying stagnant. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Do you, for those that, you know, say they don't have anybody, they don't even know where to begin finding those people. Do you have any thoughts on that or where they should reach out or find these? people? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I think there's a bunch of communities for the entrepreneurial space that, uh, that you could be a part of. I, there's free programs, there's paid programs. I mean, um, sometimes you have to pay to get certain people in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. Like I've paid tens of thousands of dollars and, and, and met people along that journey that have now become some of my best friends and people that I can call on when I'm having a hard day, because I, I know they understand what I'm going through. Right. Or, or people that are way further ahead of me that are pulling me up rather than pushing me down. Um, and so you just have to try, like, (laughs) like you listen to your podcast, you listen to my podcast. Like I have a free Facebook group. You're, you do coaching stuff. Like, um, there's hundreds of entrepreneurs just between the two of us that people can connect with. Right. And, and I'm not necessarily saying these people are going to be local to your community, but they don't have to be. And so I, I think your circle of influence is extremely, extremely important. And here's the other thing is entrepreneurship is lonely, but it's supposed to be because, because you're, you're taking a path that most people don't. Um, and what is required along the path of being an entrepreneur comes with a lot of sacrifice. And so majority of people aren't willing to live that life. And so you are going to feel, um, like your circle is smaller than most. And the truth is, is it probably is. And that's okay. Yeah. I was uh, just kind of messing around the other day on the computer and I was actually searching for like local business groups to just my local area. Yeah. And it, it's amazing once you start looking for things like on meetups and, and 
there's all kinds of different communities out there. So there's, there's things you can probably do. I don't care if you're in a small town there, like you said, you can get on Facebook. There's all kinds of different groups out there. So just take the time to, to reach out and search or heck, just email me, email, you know, Matt here. And just, he can give you ideas on where to find these people. Cause it is, it is true. Like I see it, I'm on the fire department here and you get around a bunch of guys that help push you and, and want to, you know, you know, get better in your health or, yeah. or you get better, whatever it is that we're doing in that task. And that's what keeps pushing you forward and keeps moving you think, you know, moving the needle forward. And I think it's, it is absolutely necessary. Like you said. Yeah. And, and like, let me give you an example. Like last, uh, last April, I went on a, a trip to St. Louis. It was just a day trip. Um, it was $3,000 and, and we flew, it wasn't my plane, obviously, but we flew private to this business event for, it was Andy Frisella and Ed Milet. And it was one of the top, so there's a, there's a real estate broker in our town. He owns the, the number one real estate brokerage in the state of Michigan. Um, and he, he made a Facebook post and he said, Hey, we have a one open ticket to this event. Um, if you're interested in going, fill out this form and we'll pick someone. Well, they picked me to go nice. and I was willing to spend $3,000 because a, I get to be around him. Who's doing way bigger things than me. There's another guy that owns uh, a franchise that does 150 million a year. I would have never got to meet that guy. Right. And so there's like four or five contacts on this plane that I spent $3,000 to be around for 24 hours. But now I talk to him all the time. Nice. Right. But if I, if I wasn't willing to put up the money to do that, it would have never happened. And so, you know, I, I hate to say this, but like sometimes you have to pay to get in the right circles mm -hmm. and that's just how it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know one of your friends, uh, Josh Latham here, yep. I was actually looking at it cause he has some different groups of some people that I know that have joined his, his, uh, program and they're like, that's freaking awesome. Like they have like their own masterminds that they kind of have these relationships that they do exactly as you said, you now you can talk to them and reach yeah. out to them. It, it, it's an awesome, awesome thing. If you start, start getting going on this. Yeah, it's huge. And, and I get it. There's probably a lot of guys in here like, dude, I don't have 3000 bucks for that. <laughs> like, that's okay. I didn't either in the beginning, but there are people in your community. Like go find, go find people that are running the biggest businesses in your town and start there. And go yeah. provide those people value, give them free service, take them out to lunch, do whatever you can to become friends with these people. And I guarantee you, if you do that enough times, like your circle will start to uh, start to change. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I never, I never thought about this way. A um, long time ago, when was, we were struggling with understanding our numbers and how to estimate, how to create estimates. I reached out to like uh, another landscape company. I reached out to another concrete company that was doing, you know, way bigger things like yeah. than what we're doing. And they were so open and so willing to just invite me in. I, I paid for the lunch and they showed me all everything. Like they, they opened their books and showed yeah. me this is what we do. And it's like awesome. So again, like you said, reach out. You'll, you'll be amazed. For sure. Is there um, anything like uh, tools or any systems that you recommend people need to start implementing to add accountability to their life? Um, all right. So one thing I do for every coaching client now is we basically at the end of an, the end of every weekly call, we come up with a homework assignment or multiple that they have to do. That way we can make sure they're, they're actually moving the needle in their business and life. Um, but one thing that I found to be very beneficial, not just for myself, but for the, the people I work with is to implement something on a daily basis that is physically hard to do and force yourself to do it. And so all these guys have access to me on Facebook. And so every day I require them to, and typically it's, it's something to do with working out. Um, I require them to send me a photo or video proof that that got done every single day. And it's amazing that after three, four weeks of them doing these hard things, they become not hard anymore. Right. And it becomes just a part of their routine and they're like, okay, what else? Cause like, this is easy. And, and what you realize is, the things you're struggling with right now, if you were just to force yourself to do it for four weeks straight, it would not be, you wouldn't struggle with it anymore. Mm -hmm. It would become an easy task for you to do. And then you, at that point would say, okay, what do I need to do next to level up again? And it's just this ongoing thing of doing hard things over and over until, and, until life's over, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it ever <laughs> ends because I don't, I don't know that we'll ever reach our full potential, but, um, that has been a, a hack, dude. I'm telling you, like doing something physically hard every single day is like a, it's been a game changer for my business, for my life. Um, 
and, and it's so simple, but people aren't willing to do it still because it takes discipline. Do you find that the people that you, especially that you're working with, that helping them with having accountability in their, their personal lives has also affected their, their business life as well and changed the way they do business? Yeah, because when I, when I was getting on coaching calls, um, what I thought were going to be questions like, hey, how do I market my business? Um, I'm having this business problem. The, 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 the conversations were actually, hey, I haven't, I, I'm three months behind on my mortgage. Uh, my, my marriage is failing. Um, I'm not home with my kids. And, and it clicked for me like, dude, if, that, if, if the personal side isn't together, the business side will never work. And so it, it has to start on the personal level first. Um, and that's why I'm so passionate about becoming the best version of yourself personally, because if you can do that, the business stuff is easy. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. and so, yeah, it, it, it was, a it was just a natural progression of me for me with coaching that it, it, I had no intentions of talking about personal life, but almost every single person does. And you start to realize like that is the key thing that has to get fixed before anything else can get worked on. That's very true. Very true. Cause it, it, you're going to be thinking about those things in your home life it, while you're at work, trying to figure out whatever you need to do at work. And it just, it's just going to be playing in the back of your head all the time. It's, it's yep. very true. It's very true. Now, I guess on, on the other side, you know, from your personal to your business side of things, we all want accountability. We want to have accountability, not just for ourselves, but for our team members and, and all our employees. Do you have any thoughts on how to establish or how to even get started adding accountability in, into your business if you have never done it before? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think you need to make it very simple. Mm -hmm. And so you have to figure out what it is you want to accomplish, right? And when it comes to employees, um, I think sometimes we overcomplicate things or we do things that make our employees lose trust in us. Uh, we have a million ideas as entrepreneurs and we're always trying to implement them into our business. And we think it's a good idea because we're thinking about our business 24 seven, but to our employees, it's really overwhelming. And what it actually does is lose trust. And so I think we have to step back, look at it from an employee standpoint and say, what is it on a very simple level that I'm trying to accomplish? How can I create accountability in my employees. And sometimes that's creating very, very simple systems, like something as simple as a checklist, right? When they're on the truck for every single job, there's a checklist that gets done and a photo taken of it and it gets put in the CRM and that, that person's account. Like that's something very simple that can create accountability for that crew or that employee. And so I think we oftentimes overcomplicate it, or we try to get our employees to care about our business as much as we do. And the truth is, is they don't and they never will. And so the goal of the owner is to make things as streamlined and simplified as possible that we can plug any human being into that spot and it just works. We want to take a quick second to tell you about our friends over at Cycle CPA. I can't even express to you how important it is to have a good accountant on your side. You know you want accurate bookkeeping and financial statements every month. Instead, you're often left with limited time to focus on the accounting side of your business and no reports to show for it. At Cycle CPA, the landscaping accountants, they not only handle the bookkeeping, but also provide landscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA has a team of landscaping accountants available to provide anything from bookkeeping to CFO services. Visit CycleCPA.com and for $100 off, mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast. What if you could have new customers chase you down instead of the other way around? What if price was removed as an objection for new customers? Or what if you could stand out without saying a single word? Increase your sales, get more leads, and build a brand with Green Frog Web Design. Get a website that helps you pre-sell your work and remove price and objection. And we have a great offer for the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast listeners. You can get your first month for only $1 with Scott and have your website live in three weeks from the projected start date, or it's free for a year. And now, are you tired of sending people to the crusty old website you have? Or is your website impossible to find on Google? Or just does it lack the proper SEO? Allow Green Frog Web Design to build you a new website or 
improve the SEO on your current website so that it converts visitors and helps you get ranked on Google. The other thing I, I think is a kind of misunderstanding. There, there's responsibility and then there's accountability. And I think, you know, we, we give people a task to do, whatever the task is, it doesn't matter. You give them a task to do mm -hmm. and something happens. Well, they, you know, something breaks, you know, the skidster breaks or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Something breaks. Yep. But they try doing it. A accountable person to me would be, okay, well, this broke. What do I need to do to fix this? Or who do I need to call to get this taken care of? A responsible person. Well, it just broke and just, I didn't, did what I could. That's it. And I think there's uh, something that you have to learn to help train people and guide people on through that accountability. Like, Hey, if this happens, this is what you need to do. And it, it goes back to, like you said, the systems and checklists, like this happens, yeah. you need to do this. But to me, it's a little bit of a, a training issue that you have, you know, we all want that accountability, but if you haven't taught them what to do or what, how to think or change your mind, because they're, like you said, nobody thinks the same way you do. Nobody does the same things you do. So you have to yeah. teach them how to do those things. It's, it just happens to us naturally because that's the type of person we are, especially yeah. as entrepreneurs. So I think that's, something that you have to really think about the responsibility versus accountability and how it plays in your business. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think we've all had our a, a plus employees and our, our D minus employees. Right. Um, I, I think, I think the goal is to create, and here's, here's what I've always found, especially running a small home service business. Like I'll say this, I think the home service business space is like one of the best opportunities out there right now. I think it's only going to get better, um, but it's all based on labor. So like your, your landscaping lawn care business doesn't run unless you have a bunch of guys to do the work, hmm. right? And so you have to create an environment and you have to be the type of person that people want to actually work for and you have to be different. And so if the owner, I mean, dude, it is just not hard to stand out as an owner. Like if you just even care a little bit about your employees and you, you actually do the things that you say you want them to do and you're willing to do them yourself, that's the biggest problem, right? Is like everybody wants to tell people what they, what to do, but no one's actually willing to put in the work and work alongside them. And your employees see that they can see right through you. And so I think for me, the biggest thing that I found in every single business I've ever built is I've always been willing to be on the floor, be in the field, do whatever it was right next to those guys, regardless of the, if the business is doing 200,000 or 5 million, it didn't matter. Um, and so, you know, I hate the word like company culture because I think it's used a lot, but I think the, the better way to put it is like, are you the type of owner that is willing to do whatever it takes right next to your guys any day of the week, regardless of the size of the business? And if so, your employees will see that and they will work for you hard because they understand that the guy that they're working for is willing to do the job they're doing. Yeah. I, I can recall a time when I was, I did the same thing. I'd be out there digging, shoveling the mud, doing whatever I had to do because rain coming in or whatever it had to be done. And at one point, the one of the employees is like, what are you doing here? Why, why are you here? I'm like, because we need to get this done. He's like, yeah, go home. You know, he's like, your job is to go, go get estimates, go get sales and make, you know, get us business, get us work. And it was kind of cool when they actually started to see that and realize that's, that's my goal or that's yeah. my, that's my job, I should say. And it's, it's kind of cool when you start seeing that, that shift in mindset of those people, but you, you have to put in that work though. Like you said, I, I agree. Yeah, you have to. And of course, we all want to have a business that's systemized to a point where we don't have to be in the field every day and everything. I, I understand that. That's the goal. And that should be the goal, by the way. And it's super obtainable. Um, however, when times are hard, when the business is busy, when the guys are working overtime, when they're working on Saturdays and and you're not there ever, <laughs> uh, employees get disgruntled very quick. And they start to realize the guy I'm working for isn't, isn't work. He isn't willing to do the work like we are. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I have a couple buddies in, in certain home service business space. And I, I think about one of my friends in the roofing industry and he's a, he's a owner business is very systemized. He isn't doing really anything he doesn't want to do anymore, but he will if he has to. And because of that, he has no turnover. He's got the best crews. Uh, the business is exploding. Um, 
that's the kind of owner you have to be, especially in the home service business space, because it's so uh, labor intensive and people intensive that without people, the business doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. We don't have the luxury of running an e-com business or a tech company of some sort where we can build a $5 million company with three guys. Yeah. Right. And so um, it just takes a different type of owner, I believe, to run a successful you know, landscape or home service company. Yeah. The other thing I'll throw out there is, you know, it's, it's your responsibility as the owner to, to look at your team. And, and like you said, they have, you know, those A players and, and D players, those A players don't want to be working alongside the D players. They'll do no. a little bit to try to train them and teach them. But after a certain point, they're done. Like, yeah, you know, that's when you're going to lose your A players and you have to like do what you got to do to either get rid of those D players or coach them, get them to better, be a better person or, or whatever but they don't want to work alongside of it. And it goes along the lines to me a little bit like what you said with the culture is they don't want to have that culture. They don't want to be teaching. They want to be working and it. And you have to get rid of those, those, those bad people, unfortunately, or, or do something, put them somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and kind of like we said earlier about your, your circle of influence for personal life, the same thing goes for your employees, right? So, so if you have one or two a players and they're surrounded by five or six D players, I promise you those A players are going to become C players yep. happens yep. every time. And I, I know it because I've made the mistake, yeah. right? Like I I've had one or two really bad employees destroy the majority of, of our, of our good employees because I kept them around when I should have fired them. Yep. Um, and it's hard looking back, it's hard to blame them. It's like, well, why would that, why would that guy bust his butt when he's getting paid the same as the other guy who's not yep. makes no yep. sense. So, the, your, the circle of influence for your employees is the exact same as your personal life. So that's yeah. a really good way to think about it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can share like in our, in our fire department right now, I've actually had a meeting and we had a, we have an officer's meeting and we talked about having accountability. I brought it up because there is no accountability sometimes with some of the things. And we have, we have a mixture of like full-time people and part-time people. Well, the, the problem we're seeing in our department now is we have part-time people come in but they're not doing anything like we have do, do like morning chores, daily chores, clean the yeah. rest, just clean the rigs or whatever. And they're not doing that. I'm like, well, who's responsible? Who's, you know, holding them accountable to make sure they know what they need to do. Maybe they don't need to know what to do. And then like, it's going through this whole process and it's, it's completely different than what, you know, our landscaping business, because I had all the systems in place and this department yeah. have all this stuff. It's like, well, this is what we need to do. And it, it's a little bit different because that, I'm not in charge of the fire department. I can't like say we need to do this type of stuff. So it's a yeah. different mentality, but going along those lines, it's like, I'm not seeing the change. It's like, man, do I want to be here? Is this like where I want to be? Because they're not willing to do this and letting these, not, I'm not calling these people lazy. They just maybe not know, but they're not doing anything different. I'm trying to coach what I can, but like, and it's it, to me as a, like, as an employee side of things now, it's like totally different mindset because I know yeah. what to be done. And it's, it's, it's interesting just being on the other side of the fence now being kind of a worker, I guess, than, than the yep. owner. So it's, yep. it's true. It's true. No. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if you have toxic people, um, Josh Latimer used to tell me this really early on. He said, if you have cancer inside your business, it will spread. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, that's a really good way to look at bad employees. Bad employees are the cancer. Yeah. And if you leave them there, it will spread. And I get it. People are like, dude, I can't fire this guy. Like I have work on the books and blah, blah, blah. I promise you, you're going to have a bigger problem three months down the road from now because you're going to have to not just fire one employee, but you're going to have to fire five <laughs> because now they've all been infected and you, you can't bring them back. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a real thing. Yeah. Is there anything else you could think of as far as a uh, accountability inside of a business, like how we get started or what do we need to do to, to help improve our business? I think it's a, that's a pretty loaded question. I think it depends on the company, right? I think everyone is at different a, they're at different levels. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know specifically your audience, what majority of those, what the guys are, if they're smaller landscape businesses or what, but if so, they're probably a, a one to three person company. Um, yeah a lot of that falls on, on the owner as a personal discipline and accountability. Right. Uh, you know, the, the bigger you get, um, the more need for systems. Like when I coach people when they're like, okay, I want to implement systems in my business. Like they're expecting it to be this big, complicated thing, <laughs> but it's not right. Like it's the silliest, like I just mentioned, like, like our, 
our crews on the truck, like they have a, a checklist of what has to be done from start to finish on every single job. It gets checked off, job name, signed, uploaded into the CRM. What does that do? That eliminates 95% of the callbacks of, hey, you guys left this piece of equipment here or this ladder or there's towels in my yard or there's a screen left out or you guys didn't do a walk around or whatever the case is because there's a very simple system called a checklist, right? Or we have uh, training on exactly our three-point touch system with the customer when the crews are on the job. So every single customer gets talked to the exact same way. That way the customer experiences as close to the same as humanly possible through every crew, right? And these are basic, basic things. And so when people talk about systems, it sounds like a fancy word, but it's just a, it's just a word for coming up with a very simple process that your people can follow. And so break it down from start to finish, dude. Like, you know, for, for landscape crews, what does, what does your crew, what is important for your crew to understand from the second they get there in the morning until when they finish that job at the end of the day, and then create some type of very simple system for them to follow in order for them not to miss any steps. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think when you simple, simplify things like that, it gets a lot easier. Same thing goes for your office staff, uh, your salespeople. Um, you just break it down into a really simple form. Yeah, I, I agree. We, years ago, we had a package deal of, of checklist that we sold for our million dollar landscaper program. And I had one person that emailed me and said they wanted their money back. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I have no problem doing that. And I asked him, just curious why he's like, well, I thought it'd be more. I'm like, mm. well, what, what did you want? I'm like, these are checklists of everything that needs to get done. I'm like, and the one was, I give example was mowing. And part of the checklist was they have to pick up the garbage so they don't mow over it and yeah. make it for one piece to a million pieces. I'm like, do people do this every time in your business? Well, no. Okay. Well then this is what the checklist is supposed to accomplish. Yeah. I gave him the money back. I didn't want, I'm not going to argue with that, but yeah, it's like, it, like you said, it's, it's these simple things that make a huge difference in your business. And it, yes, a checklist may seem simple and, and but it is easy to implement and it's what's going to make the big difference and make, you know, your team get better and better. You can always improve those checklists and add to it, but you have to start with the simple things. Yeah. I mean, same, th same things happened with me. It was probably four or five years ago. Uh, we created a marketing plan for this, this guy and, um, he gets it and I, it's, de it's detailed month to month, start to finish for the whole year. And, and he's like, I want my money back. I'm like, okay, no problem. What's up? Well, I thought it was going to be like, I thought there was going to be something on here. Like I didn't know. I'm like, dude, there is no magic ball, <laughs> but your business is doing a hundred grand a year for a reason. It's because it's because you have no accountability. You have no plan. So here's the plan. Now, you do, all you have to do is just stick to the plan. I've laid it out for you perfectly. Right. And so it's just funny because, like we said earlier, people, for the most part, know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, they're just not willing to do it. And I think that's exciting for people who are are willing to do it because, you know, that's your competitors. Like most of your competitors are lazy. They're not disciplined. They're overweight. They eat like crap. They have a bad family life. Um, fill in the blank, right? And so if you can be that guy that's not all of those things, if you can become the best version of yourself, become insanely disciplined, you will smash your competition. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. And so I, I think it's exciting because, you know, not bragging, but for somebody like myself, who is very passionate, like I'm very passionate about chasing the best version of myself. I want to know what that guy is. Um, that's, that's scary for the guys I'm competing against locally because I know they're not like that. And the good news is, is anyone can be that guy. They just have to make the decision to do so. Yeah. I, I the other thing I was going to say for myself personally, because I'm, I'm literally tomorrow, I'm signing up for a coaching program to help hold myself more accountable because that's why I, this podcast is like perfect timing because yeah. I'm like, this is something I need to do. And it, it, again, it goes to the things I know I need to do, but it's trying to like prioritize and figure out exactly what the best way, you know, just kind of get other input. And it's 
it's awesome. I'm very excited for this program to, to start doing this and start getting implementing my business because I'm excited to see how I can become better because I'm always looking at myself and, and critiquing myself and yeah. trying to figure out how to be better. And I think that's something that every entrepreneur needs to be doing. We should never get complacent and thinking this is the best way. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. And there's this is something you need to be thinking about everything you do in your business. But just pick one thing, choose it. Make it better, simplify it, whatever you got to do and, and just yeah. take that first step. Otherwise you're going to be stuck. And you, like you said, the guy is doing a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, they're going to get stuck. And we see this all the time in landscape industry. People get stuck. They don't want to change anything, but they don't want to be the same way they're at. Well, you have to change something to make a difference. So it, it, start yeah. doing something. Yeah, dude, you have to. And, um, it's amazing when, you know, I, I know we're talking about personal stuff a lot and probably people are hoping this is more of a business podcast, but, um, I'm just such a believer that without one, you can't have the other. Uh, when, when you focus on one thing personally that you're struggling with, like, like when you look yourself in the mirror or when maybe there's a, a single guy or girl on here and they, they're like, okay, this is the type of person I want to date or marry one day. Um, what are the qualities in that other person that you want? What are really important to you? And then look at yourself and say, do I have those qualities? Okay. So for me, that was where I started. I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, okay, this is what I want in another person. And one of those things for me was like someone who's healthy that works out. I'm like, dude, look at yourself. Like you're, you're 30 pounds overweight, you're unhealthy, you eat out every day. And so for a year straight, I was like, I'm going to the gym five, six days a week until I become this person. And then I mastered that. Right. And then it's on to the next thing while still doing the gym thing, because now it's just part of my routine. And so I don't think there's an easy answer uh, to the business side either. Like the reality is, is we know what has to get done. Majority of it is not fun, um, but it's required. Yeah. And so just like the marketing, there is no magic eight ball that, that you don't know exists right now when it comes to marketing and acquiring customers. Um, the same thing goes with your accountability and the things in your business that are boring or not fun. Like they just are. And so do them. There is just no way around it. If you want to grow and scale, that is part, that is part of the plan that has to happen. Yeah, I agree. For those that, again, kind of going back to the, just need to get started. We talked about, you know, changing the people you're around. Yeah. Is there any books or anything that if somebody just needs to kind of get started, doesn't have anything necessarily right away, is there anything that's kind of stood out to you or something that you'd recommend for people to kind of change your mindset if they can't afford a coaching, they can't afford to do something yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I get asked this question kind of a lot. I don't ever read. Okay. Um, I do listen to podcasts. I, I would say if, if you're feeling, uh, a little demotivated and you just want to hear it straight, um, Alex Hermosi talks a lot. I think he's got a podcast called the game. He, he talks a lot about this stuff. Uh, and he's very blunt in the aspect of, he's not going to sugarcoat how you, f how, how you want to feel. Um, his story is very inspiring and he's just a, a very basic guy. Like he simplifies everything. And I'm, re I really, really like the way he teaches. So if, if you go check out Alex Hormozzi on YouTube or on, uh, you know, whatever podcast you listen to, that would be a really good start for free. Yeah. It, I'll just share a book that I just started raising not too long ago, actually listening to it's called accountability in the workplace. Um, I can't remember the name. I'll put it in the show notes. I can't remember yeah. the, the author's name, but it's actually really good. It, it's a different mindset and different way of thinking. Um, and, and they start off talking about like some of the older ways of holding people accountable. And it was sharing of, um, I'm trying to call here, like back in the day, you know, before people would, like you needed that job. So the, the scare tactic was in place. Like you just did what you had to do to make the boss happy. And that was, that was kind of a scare tactic. Well, it's a whole different mindset nowadays, especially with the younger generation coming in and understanding like the why behind the things. And it's, it's, it's a different mindset. And, um, I think it's, it is a really good book and I, I really recommend anybody out there. It's called again, um, accountability in the workplace and I'll, I'll put cool. the link in that thing, but it is actually a good book to kind of get going and thinking and changing your way, because that's something that we see many landscapers are stuck kind of in the older mindset of things and just scaring people, not everybody, but you know, they're just, yep. I said to do it this way. That's how it has to happen. That's, that's how I grew up. Like I literally was telling somebody the other day, I remember when I was little in high school 
in, in out working in the field. I remember my dad like yelling at somebody cause they're doing something wrong in the truck. And like my dad literally chased the guy out of the truck. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. I remember what is going on here? But that's just, it's a different mindset. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that. So I think, again, this is a really good book and I really recommend it for anybody out there. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. I, I, I only don't read books cause I kind of suck at reading and, um, <laughs> I don't comprehend very well. And so I just know that about myself. Like I've always been that way. So I'm just more of a podcast guy for sure. I will say this though. um, And I know we're probably running out of time here, but uh, also be careful about like how much you consume. Right. Because what I've, I've made the mistake in my life where like I over consume content. Uh, Maybe some people over read books. Like I, I, I see friends of mine, they're like, Oh, I read like 25 books this year. It's like, cool. How much of that did you actually implement? Right. And so it's like, I would rather see someone be like, I read one book this year and I implemented as much as humanly possible out of it over the course of 12 months. Yeah. You know, and so that's something I've really been focusing on, too, because I'm 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 just as guilty of that as as anyone is. I can listen to a million podcasts over the course of a week and do nothing with any of the information I learned. Um, And so, you know, sometimes it's good just to turn it all off and actually get to work. Yeah. And it, well, it's so much easier nowadays is to get this information, YouTube, TikTok, yeah. all the social media platforms. There's so much information out there and it's exactly true. Like we'll just, yeah, it's a good idea, but it goes back your head and that's it. You know, you don't really ever yeah. implement it. So yeah, I agree a hundred percent. It's, it's taking the action that going back to like David Goggins, he's like, you just got to do it. Well, it's true. You would just have to take the time. You have to put the energy to it. And like you said, working out, whatever it is, you just have to put the energy into it and make it happen. Yeah, man. There's just no easy answer. That's all. So, um, but, but it's good. You know, the, the exciting part is for those that are willing to do the work that is required, there's a massive outcome and they will live a life that most people don't. Yeah. I love it. Well, Matt, I appreciate you being on here today and sharing your stories and tips here. How can people get hold of you? Where can they find you? Yeah. So first, if you want to do something free, they can go on Facebook and join the free Facebook group. So if you guys just search service industry tribe with Matt Smith, or maybe you can even put a link in the show notes, um, hundred percent free. I am in there every single day. There's, uh, uh, we have well over a hundred people in there now, but like my goal would be to get like 500 home service business owners in there that are sharing wins every day, sharing losses, um, difficulties, and like, just become this massive family, right? That is, that is literally my sole mission for that Facebook group. And so anyone listening, I would encourage to go join that because it's a positive spot to be on social media. Um, and then just my website, serviceindustrycoach.com. Um, and then obviously I have the podcast, which is the service industry podcast. Yeah, definitely go check that out. He's got a lot of great stuff, a lot of great stuff on his website. I was on there this morning. The website looks great, by the way. Thanks, man. Um, but no, it's awesome to have you on here and, and sharing this great stuff. And I, I, I know people need to do this stuff. It just, like you said, you have to implement it. So take some words of wisdom from, from Matt here and, and go apply this and make it happen in your business. Get Change your friends, change your group, whatever you got to do. You can make a difference in your life and your business life as well. For sure. So thanks, Matt. I appreciate you being on here and look forward to having you on again in the future. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.